Hi there guys, Oli here. Welcome back to the channel. In this episode of Ask a Medical Student, this Q&A series, we'll be tackling what is a medical conference and how do I go about getting involved? Hi there everyone, my name is Oli. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick in the UK. In this series, I'm trying to address as best I can questions that you guys send in and do them one by one so that each question gets a full and proper answer. And it felt really appropriate to tackle this question today because I have just finished uh, presenting some of my work at a virtual medical conference. Thankfully, as is often the case in medicine, we can go to the Latin um, etymological root. So we have con, uh, meaning together or with, and then ferre, similar to the, the modern term that we now know, ferry, to carry something, to move it from one place to another. And this all got kind of jumbled up in medieval Latin uh, to mean to bring together, to bring together like-minded people or to deliberate on something. And that, of course, is exactly what we see in a conference of any kind, not just related to medicine, but you have a group of like-minded people all with a shared interest usually in, in one or a very narrow range of things. So in practice that might be surgery, it might be medical education, it might be a particular specialty like anaesthetics or general practice. It's a group of people coming together who are interested in a thing to talk about the thing and usually present some research or some work that they've done in the thing and usually you'll have some talks and workshops from kind of eminent speakers or well-known personalities in that space. Then I guess what obviously follows on from this is do you as a medical student, as a doctor, need to be interested in medical conferences? I would say probably not because obviously they're, they're niche interest anyway so certainly if the topic is not something that you're particularly interested in probably not worth your attending. However, if you're interested in pre-hospital or emergency medicine, then sure, going to a pre-hospital or emergency medicine conference might be helpful in terms of getting a better insight into a career as an emergency medicine doctor, maybe preparing your portfolio to apply for a specialty job, as I've said before, and getting a feel for what the people are like networking, learning the faces, learning who you need to talk to. That said, if I was wanting to investigate maybe a specialty or an element of medicine that I'd never considered before but wanted to learn a bit more about, a conference is one of the first places that I would go because I'd get a good snapshot view into that specialty and start meeting people, networking and being able to ask questions about the reality, you know, what's it like doing your job? What are the positives? What are the negatives? What are the things I really need to know? What are the interviews like? But there is another element to this, which is that if you're a medical student or maybe a, you know, a foundation doctor or a young trainee, maybe in core training, basically if you haven't decided or ultimately committed to a career pathway, some specialties, particularly the more competitive ones, like you to have presented your own work at conferences because conferences at least historically, have been seen as the, the standard prescribed way to disseminate your research, the kind of official way. And you'll see some footage on screen now from the last major conference that I went to. It was a two-day neurosurgical conference at King's uh, in London. That was absolutely fantastic. And you can see the kind of practical things we got up to. And as with everything in medicine, we can kind of divide this into levels. So in terms of the conferences themselves, they can either take place locally, nationally, or internationally, obviously with increasing levels of prestige. So you might have a local conference that's maybe at your university, which might be a med ed or careers conference or something, then a national conference, which might be the national pediatrics conference for the UK or for whatever country you like. And then you have international conferences, which seek to bring people together from all over the world and they're kind of the most prestigious, most expensive usually to attend uh, types of conferences. Then when it comes to presenting your work at each of these conferences there might be just an abstract presentation where you summarize in you know 150-200 words a piece of research or a case report or something that you've done. The next level up from that might be something like a poster so you're graphically demonstrating the results and the findings of a project you've been involved with and then the kind of top level 
as it were, is an oral presentation where your work, your abstract is considered so good by the panel that you get invited and you get a designated period of time, which might be five or 10 minutes to address the entire delegation that's come to the conference and tell them about how good your work is. So an oral presentation basically tops the hierarchy in what you can do at a conference and then an international conference is the top of the hierarchy of conferences. So if you can do an oral presentation at an international conference, that's your kind of peak achievement as it were. But honestly, anything you can do is a really good thing. Even getting a poster or an abstract accepted at a conference is an achievement in and of itself because the entry standards can be really high. And the other element is prizes as well. You know, if you do really well in a presentation of any kind, maybe your post is really good or you give a really dramatic and exciting oral presentation, um, there are both first place prizes and runner up prizes at these conferences as well, which are great things to have on your CV and will help you definitely at specialty selection. It's one of the things that tends to look quite good in your portfolio from what I understand. So I've been really lucky and have been able to present at a few conferences. In my undergraduate degree, we gave an oral presentation at an international conference and were nominated for a prize. Um, last year, I presented at the Widening Participation um, Medical Schools Council conference and we won the runner-up prize for an oral presentation at a national conference. You know, these things are really good to have and the barrier to entry is not that high. So the last element that I'm gonna quickly address is how do I get involved? Essentially, any significant piece of work that you've done, and it doesn't even have to be that significant, is probably suitable to write an abstract from and to submit to a conference. So the one I've done today, we ran this one-off virtual surgical webinar, which we gathered you know, data from the participants, we measured some outcomes before and after, measured a difference, we got some qualitative data, we did a superficial analysis of that, from a one day event, which took maybe a couple of weeks of planning, we got more than 200 paired data points. We got our abstract accepted, and then we were able to present our poster based on the data at a national conference like two weeks later. So if you're just starting out, try and start small, look for local conferences or national conferences that are confined to your interest. You know, if you've done a project or an audit or something, in cardiology, you know, the first thing you could do is go and present it to some cardiologists at your hospital. Say, can I, you know, give you a presentation on what I've done? You can give me some feedback, maybe help me submit it to a conference, refine it a little bit, find a local conference, turn up, tell everyone how good your stuff is. You may get ripped apart, you know, by a judging panel, particularly at these higher prestige conferences. I've seen that happen both to it's happened to me, it's happened to my colleagues, it's happened to some of the doctors that taught me at medical school when I turned up, they were there presenting, they then get eviscerated by a panel of consultant surgeons. It doesn't matter, what matters is that you've presented your work and you've gone through the process. And it really prepares you, I think, for maybe more projects in academic medicine, particularly because of the relationships that you make. There's a quick rundown on what medical conferences are, guys, and why you should care. I hope that's been useful for you and not too boring. If you've got any further questions, please let me know in the comments down below, and I'd be delighted to have a go at answering them. Thanks for watching, guys. There are three ways you can support the channel. The first one is to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend. Just enjoy it generally. Second, you can buy me a coffee if you found it useful using my Ko-Fi link, which will help keep me awake during the editing process. And then thirdly, you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favorite 3D anatomy learning tool. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.